Hi folks, I'm Dr. Denboer. We're going to visit probiotics today. Hot topic. And as always at DBC and Nature's Remedies, we're going to give you the very latest in technology, the very latest in information, the groundbreaking things, and everything that has been science proven. So you're not gonna hear just hearsay or rumors here. You're going to get actual scientific fact that is cutting edge. So welcome to our talk on probiotics. Probiotics is an incredible topic that is exploding across our nation. Currently, there's more than 500 ongoing studies in hospitals on just probiotics with phenomenal improved outcome on anything from surgery to gut issues, and the list goes on and on. Why all this interest all of a sudden? Well, it really started back in the 1800s. 1895, we had a physician who saw that when we have an imbalance in the good bacteria in the gut, you get something called leaky gut syndrome. This word fell out of favor, and it wasn't until those four or five years ago that the gastroenterologist finally recognized, yes, leaky gut is a real entity. We are going to recognize this, and it's caused mainly by an imbalance in the good bacteria. This good bacteria population is called a microbiome, and the microbiome is an incredibly important, almost organ-like thing that lives on and in our bodies. We have 10 times as many bacteria in our gut and skin as we have cells in our body. The DNA content of all this combined far outnumbers our gene pool. In fact, we're barely human. And the microbiome is so important. It is an essential first line of defense for our immune system. It compromises about 70% of your immunity. It also creates hormones pulls things out of your food so we can readily access it. And we often call the gut the second brain because 92% of our neurochemicals and neurotransmitters gets produced in the gut alone. In fact, my home country, the Netherlands, depression, bipolar, obsessive compulsive disorders, and on and on, is often considered a gut problem first and a brain problem second. So this is very fascinating and we are starting to learn so much about all the different bacteria. When we started here 27 years ago, we were working mainly with Lactobacillus and Bifidus itself. These two very important probiotics we're going to talk about next time. But first, I'm gonna talk a little bit what worries me. With all this hubbub and all this emerging excitement with the probiotics, one thing that's getting lost in the whole mash of information is the integrity of the gut wall itself. Sure, you can supplement with the finest, most appropriate probiotics, but it's a little bit like if you're throwing seed in the Sahara Desert, nothing really happens. And it's the same thing with our gut wall. When it's lost its integrity, if it becomes inflamed, it is infertile and probiotics, the good bacteria will not grow, will not flourish. So most of our patients, when they come in with any kind of gut imbalance, we don't just throw any old probiotic at, no. We try to figure out why did this happen in the first place. And we embark on what we call a 4R pro, uh, program. The first R stands for remove. We remove the offending agent. Oftentimes that's a food, it could be a drug. It could be even something like mold overgrowth in the home. Whatever the offending agent is, you remove it. Oftentimes that means getting rid of inflammatory foods such as gluten, dairy, corn, some kinds of soy, and whatever else may be bothering the patient. We call that the elimination diet. Next, we replace the enzymes because often when there has been offending agents doing damage to the gut wall, enzymes are also depleted because the body has overproduced enzymes in order to try to compensate. So we replace enzymes from either the liver and gallbladder, pancreas or stomach, or all three. This is done with products that make the enzymes come back by supporting the organ as well as providing the enzymes itself. This is very important, folks, because oftentimes digestive enzymes get thrown at the body and then you become dependent on it. No, you want to support the organ that's deficient at the same time. We use Metagest for the stomach, Asiopangin for the pancreas, and Lipogen for the gallbladder. Next, we embark on repair. 
Repairing the lining, the leakiness of the gut, is absolutely critical. There's a very exciting new probiotic, which we'll talk about in the succeeding blogs, that can repair the integrity of the lining. We also give the patient something called endothin. It is a very specific fiber that not only kills bad bugs, but also acts as a prebiotic and gives all the nutrients to the wall so it can repair itself, especially in the colon. L-glutamine with deglycerized licorice, as we give to patients in Glutacore or Glutagenics, can also re uh, repair the gut lining, even in cases of irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, amazing the effects we have with that. And then finally, we re-inoculate with the good bacteria. And the good bacteria must be appropriate. We use multiple different strains here, 30 in all, and every strain has its purpose. Some reside in the colon, some go to the small intestines, some are for inflammation, and some are for leaky gut syndrome, and on and on the list goes. And we will cover that in the succeeding blogs. I think you'll enjoy those a lot. So next time, probiotic basics. What to look for quality-wise. What is appropriate for you? And we'll start talking about them in groupings. So till next time, I'm Dr. Denbor.